Hey everyone, welcome back to episode 6 of The Match Fix. I'm Shock, the gatekeeper of Grandmaster and the collector of Carbon's LP. And I'm joined by the close contact, the increasingly isolated Amelg. I'm Amelg. We're at week 6 of the LCO and our super weeks have finally come to an end. If you do only have time to catch one day of the LCO this week, definitely go for day one. There are three absolute bangers, three of the best games this week all on day one, so definitely check that out. Our first game of the day was PGG vs Chiefs. So what do you think about this game, Amel? Pretty close, honestly. Bit of a slugfest. Uh, PGG did like look like they had like a pretty solid early to mid game, but I think Balkan looked a little bit shaky. I'm glad they, they put him on J4, like something that has like an aggressive early game and can make plays. Um, but definitely not not one of his best performances. There were a lot of like small mistakes that he made, um, especially around like team fighting or even like getting caught before team fights. I think if he had sort of cleaned up his gameplay a little bit, this game definitely could have been theirs. I think it was also really nice to see the Chiefs mid jungle like step up in a really big way. It's not like they've been playing bad or anything, like they've been playing really well still, but I think in this game, like Arthur probably had his best game of the split, like played really well. And Tally also, I think, did pretty well, got countered by the Silas and still like heavily outperformed his opponent. I think games so far have like, a lot of them have been on the back of like top owner rays, uh, but this game was definitely like the Chiefs mid jungle. Uh, like really taking over and outperforming their opponents. I think Arthur had almost 100% KP, which is pretty crazy for like quite like a high kill game. Um, he definitely like had a lot of presence all over the map at like pretty much all points in the game. So really well played by him. So I thought the draft was pretty interesting. There are a few things that like are starting to pop up more and more. So the Ari priority is staying pretty high. And I've, this is like a couple times now that Silas is being used matching Ari. And honestly, I'm not sure how much I like it. I do think... Silas is somewhat an RE counter, but I think the like burden of execution is like really, really high for the Silas. Like you're playing on a knife's edge all the time. And if you do play that well, like you'll do well. But I think like Ari is a much easier champion to play and it fits into a team identity like much easier. Um, and we'll see again like later in this week another Ari versus Silas matchup. And I think every time it's gone well for the Ari. So I'm not too sure uh, if teams are going to look for a different counter or just like the Silas players aren't good enough. There's one thing I thought that was extremely weird is the Chiefs picked Akali into Jace. So as far as I know, this is an awful matchup for Akali and it did seem that way. Like the Akali got solo killed. Um, she was very behind in the game. Topman did manage to have a lot of impact, but I think that was more a testament to Toppen's skill on Akali rather than it being a great pick. And I actually wonder if like, if there was a better pick there because I feel like the Akali was maybe picked to just like threaten the enemy AD carry. But I think there could have been champions that do that while winning lane of the day, something like Wukong or something. So I'm not totally sure there, but it felt very weird, you know, when you have that red side last pick to opt into a losing matchup because you're kind of just like, you know, giving away a lot of this power. Like I guess you can use red side last pick Sometimes to just compositionally counter the enemy team. But I don't think Akali really did that this game. So kind of would like to see a little bit more, uh, maybe like some different options come up for top Oon, uh if the enemy team blind picks Chase again. Poon's just the GOAT though. He made it work. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Chase versus PGG was followed by another banger of a match in Peace versus Gravitas. And if you had told me this at the start of the week, I definitely would not have believed you. Um, this game, I think it had like 1 million channel points and 97% of people did it on peace. Like from the get-go, you know, Gravitas being Gravitas. And I think what made this game interesting, um, right from the draft, was Kindred being picked as an answer into Graves. Yeah, I think peace did quite a few things that are like a bit different from normal. Obviously, yeah, the Kindred into Graves. Although, even though it's like a strange pick, I actually don't think it's the weirdest thing because it is still like something that I think Tian is good at, like ranged top lane bullies are champs like he's good on. And if that's a way for him to beat Graves, like sure, I think it's fine. But I think what was and actually- And exists. Sure, you can build Hellbreaker on any champ you want. Uh, but what I think was like actually a bit weirder than that was the rest of the champs on the peace team. So I think um, the first thing that was like a bit different to me was this, this Ezreal Karma. So I think Ezreal Karma is somewhat similar to what peace have played before. They do like, they're strong bot lanes, and this is is one of those. Like, they have a lot of push. Um, but it's not quite the same late-game insurance as, say, um, like the Caitlyn, Jinx, or Ophelius. You know, something like Caitlyn Lux. Similar levels of, like, lane domination. Much weaker in mid-game, but then you do have that, like, late-game, like, insurance still. Yeah. And I think when you are playing something 
uh, like the the Karma Ezreal or the Caitlyn Lux, it's really important that you have like a mid jungle that proactively moves around the map. And that's something they've been playing a lot with stuff like Rise Lee Sin. Uh, but when they have Akali Hecarim, like two champs, they can't really do anything until level six. I think that made the game quite a bit like more difficult for them. And especially, you know, talking about the gameplay now, when mid gets solo killed and bot also gets 2v2 killed at like three or four minutes or whenever it was, that was like, that's going to make the game pretty hard for them. Especially when you take into account that like they pick Ezreal Karma to be a strong bot lane, but then they give up the first two dragons. Like, it's not really where you want to be when you're picking Ezreal Karma. Yeah, I think that was actually another thing that like could have been a product of the mid jungle because after level six, um, Akali and Hecarim went top to dive the graves, which is which is good. But I think you get punished a lot harder, like by of weak siding your bot lane when you're playing champs like Akali, where your wave clear is a lot slower. You know, if you're playing something like Rise or something like Ari after level six, when you've got all that wave clear, oftentimes you can actually roam to a lane and you can get back in mid uh, in time to stop like the the counterplay on the other side of the map. But on a champ like Akali, it's not really possible. Like you see, he pushed in mid. And um, then he he makes a successful play top, but his bot lane suffers as a result. And I think like Ezreal Karma getting four man like two or three times is pretty much the exact opposite of what Ezreal Karma wants. And I'm not sure like what you're meant to do in this situation. Like does Ezreal Karma <laughs> just like give up their tower? Like that doesn't really seem right. Does Akali just like not proactively roam? It doesn't seem like right either. So I'm not really sure what, um, maybe it's just a draft issue. I mean, I'm sure they could have played a better, right? But I think they, yeah. they put themselves in a pretty hard position kind of just like from the draft and from the first like 10 minutes how it played out. Especially you take into account that uh, Cheon and Beats got TV2 killed yeah. solo by Thomas Shen and Vixfer. <laughs> I think Thomas Shen might be a little bit pissed that I, I talked shit about him last episode. <laughs> the game was still overall pretty even all the way up until around like 25 minutes when Gravitas just barely came out on top of like a pretty drawn out Baron dance. I think they lucked out a little bit because Dayong and Vix were both came out of that on like 1 HP and then they ended up getting the Baron. Completely sliced up, Dayong might just be dead. He's gone gold and he's his team to back him up. Where are they? Moonlight Venture comes across. Dayong surviving! He's out! He's lived! And Thomas Shen has just found a shark down. That is unbelievably clutch. No, I'm not saying peace were trolling by any means. Like, I'm sure they took it as seriously as any other game, but there is still a, a level of like, you know, they probably didn't prepare for it as much as they would have prepared for it going up against Chiefs, for example. The last game on day one I really want to highlight is Direwolves vs. Order. This is a pretty important match because it brings Direwolves Order to a 1-1 head-to-head. I think Direwolves are also only one point behind Order. I think Direwolves 7-8 to Order's 8-7. And, and that's really important because that like top four that we were talking about is now quickly becoming a top five with Direwolves kind of as that like fifth team. So what did you think about the game and why do you think Daiwals managed to take that win. Daiwals overall just drafted like a much easier comp to execute, all right? Like it's pretty branded, kind of just put all your eggs into the Jinx basket and group is five, win the game from there. Whereas Order has like quite a lot harder of, an, of a comp to execute. I feel like I've been inhaling a lot of Order Copium because I feel like this team can be a lot better than what they've shown so far in the split. And I feel like like the Order I believe in would be able to execute this comp well, but <laughs> It's, it's just, I don't know. I don't know what's what's up with them. They just haven't really been performing up to expectations. And I'm just really hoping they can find their groove before the split ends. I think there is like definitely some time. And I don't think this game should really like write off order as like a you know strong team. Because I think, yeah, like you said, this is like a pretty hard comp to play, especially when you've got, you know, champs like Zoe, Lux, Caitlyn. Um, and I think that's like something that often gets ignored. I think ease of execution for a team comp is is like very important in Oceania and you know even in some of the major regions some of the weaker ones so and there have been like many successful teams in Oceania that have played like very simple like easy to execute just like front to back or team fight comps and I really like you know the Diwals did just play into that you know they have like amid the complaint Chanas I think they're like Bolin is also comfortable on like stuff like the the Jinx Lulu um, so I think they really played into their strengths. And it was actually weird that after Diwolves won this game, I'm pretty sure the next day they just like also just chose a completely different comp. And I was not <laughs> surprised to see them lose that game. So yeah, that's all I have to say. We kind of saw the themes we talked about uh, show up again in the like last game of the Super Week, which was Chiefs versus Order. Um, Order just overall looking pretty shaky, whereas Chiefs mid-jungle 
kind of stealing the show again, Taylor and Arthur on Ari and Lisa again. Yeah, it was funny to see that Ari versus Silas, and this time it went even worse than the first time. I think Telly <laughs> Solo killed him at like level three. And actually, something interesting about this is I actually remember Kise playing Silas into I think Chungi's Ari last year and having like a really good game on it. So it's not like he's new to the matchup at all. So I'm I guess like maybe the Ari rework has just like made it a little different. Like Ari has a bit more sustain. Um, her damage is like been moved around a little. So maybe that's like kind of tripping up the Silas's in these matchups. I'm not totally sure. Uh, but either way, just like really impressive, like pretty much a 1v9 from Tally. I think, you know, solo killing your lane, getting like 11 kills or something. I think like no deaths and a quadra kill, like probably the best game I've seen Tally play of mid. Um, yeah, just like really impressed overall. And I think it's like really, it's like a really good thing for Chiefs going into playoffs to have like people that, now I would say can carry in, in basically every role they have. So that's really good signs for Chiefs going into playoffs. Well, the final super week of LCS Split 1, we saw actually a decent amount of movement in the standings. Um, Chiefs and Peace sitting at first and second respectively, both locked into playoffs, good for them. Um, and then we kind of see a top five forming as opposed to a top four with Direwolves kind of sneaking on up into the top five, sitting at seven, eight, off a 2-1 week, which is pretty good for them. EGG also having a pretty successful 2-1 week, moving up over Order, who went 1-2, looking a little bit shaky for them, still in the top 5 by a decent margin, but I'm hoping that they can start picking stuff up. Once again, not too much action for Kanga, Mammoth, and Gravitas. 1-2 uh, weeks for Kanga and Gravitas, respectively. Gravitas obviously picking up a pretty big win over Peace. Pretty good for them. I think it will still be pretty hard for them to make playoffs. But a win is a win, you know what I mean? So as far as I know, each team only has six games left, which I think makes it pretty unlikely that like Kanga or Mammoth does manage to steal that like fifth spot away from Direwolves. That's possible, but I think at this point we do have our five playoff teams. Those teams, other than like Chiefs, they're all like still within like range of each other, of like the standings to move around. I expect to see some like final movement in these last three weeks. Despite the match fix not making it onto the LCO broadcast, there were still some really good LCO moments this week. You're damn right there were. On day two for Kanga vs Peace game, Livid was asked to give a compliment to someone and he wanted to shout out his team. I will compliment everyone on my team, except for only because he said what he said yesterday and I'm incredibly upset about that. Everyone else is beautiful though. What did he say the day before? I'll do like one episode of uh, AOT. I wouldn't do a four season binge. I'm, I'm a fan of other animes. I'm not going to binge four seasons. Sorry. Sorry Tristan. Sorry to my teammate. Yeah. Pretty rough for Livid there. Really, really cuts deep man. I mean look what happened. I lost the PG in peace. Like, Complete team mental boom right there. Hey, you know my stance on anime. What else happened this week? On day two versus the Diwolves versus Chiefs match, we saw some potential miscomms or mistimings between Bulldogs, Renis, and Kyose, resulting in a triple kill for Raze. He's excited oh, no. and he is outplaying. So CC off on Kyose. This will dive, it's huge. Can they? Oh no! Oh, no. Yeah, Raze played it really well, and it was also funny, this was like straight off the back of Drag who's 1v2 as Tom. Direwolves are just like trying to kill them with as many people as they can, but they just can't do it every time. Oh, no, Kenny, look at this, he's actually gonna clutch in a 1v2. Draku, unbelievable. Wait, that's two kills. Another bot lane mishap was on the day three Kanga versus PGG game. We had only flash over a wall <laughs> and attempt to get a bit of a sneaky gank on Peace. Unfortunately, it was watered and they did see the whole thing coming. Now the hook as well by Spade. Wind becomes lightning with an audacious charge and a talent strike. That won't be followed up only. I love it, but it is backfiring so much. Dude, that was so funny. He flashes over the wall, goes to gank bot. And they didn't kill either of them and all three of them died. I actually could not believe that. <laughs> That was like actually the funniest thing I'd seen in a while. Here's the fly away, dark passage to the heel again. Oh, no. and pray to this reset once more. Here's a clip for the bot laners out there. In classic ADC fashion, the Praetor sniffs out a quadra kill, but Gravitas finds strength in numbers and turns it against him. Come on, a reduction to make this play happen. Praetor says, uh, well, wait, does I he not see that. Zoe? But I'll get the kills instead. Please walk into the base. Oh yeah, there God. it is. A flash goes He's out. It's becoming now. a bit of a clown fiesta. What is going on here? That was just a tragic turn of events, man. They're all on one HP, Zoe flashes out and Jinx just ends up stuck in the pit. I mean, it was so sad. I feel bad for Praetor. I don't really get what happened with the whole focus retrospection. Focus meme. down the ADC. Focused on focusing. Focused and tunnel vision. Bit of focus and retrospection. 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 About the retrospection, he's also big on the focus. <laughs> Rusty. Oh yeah, that was uh, that was Kuden's interview from uh, the day two game against Diwolves. He was giving us some pro tips. 12 and one record. I mean, how do you retain that level of consistency? Focus and retrospection. 
but mainly focus. Yeah, it was so funny when Hysterics met Kuden for the first time. They've been saying it all day. Focus. How's the focus today? Good. Good. Guys running Ari, Camille in the side lanes. Uh, feels like a, a very different approach. Yes. Yes, it is. That was Does Kuden. that happen all the time? Every time. <laughs> Yeah, he definitely found our broadcast to be pretty different. I mean, here in Oast, our casters don't even talk to each other. Taking it, it's easy for Direwolves now to farm up some supers, but what's your assessment? Jinx coming in with the rapid fire cannon, a really good purchase. In Honestly, though, I think Kitty has improved pretty quick, and I think it's really important for the broadcast to have that like challenger perspective on there. So I think that's really cool. Simp. Wait, you just said simp. I'm not simping, man. I'm just saying it how it is. Okay, rapid five questions time. You know the rules, no thinking. If you think you're cringe, plus ratio. You ready? I'm ready to get ratioed, all right. Okay, would you rather watch anime or piss on your hands? Um, piss on my hands. Chungi did it, man. It's not that weird, right? <laughs> In our second episode, I asked if Gravitas will win any games. Will Gravitas win any more games? Yeah, I think Gravitas are the best team in the world right now, so they're gonna win lots more games. Do you like the Kanga logo? What is the Kanga logo? It's like a kangaroo mm, face. I don't think I like it. I don't like kangaroos. I think they're stupid and overrated. We lost half okay. our viewership just then. <laughs> <laughs> Double rainbow, what does it mean? What the fuck? What did you say? Double rainbow. Double what rainbow. Does it mean? I have no idea. What? You don't know the line? The last quote? No. What is it? Enlighten me. Uh, double rainbow is a phenomenon of optics that displays a spectrum of light due to the sun shining on drops of moisture in the atmosphere. Jesus. No, I don't play loser champs, so I've never heard that quote. If you <laughs> oh, ask yeah, you me about any of the forgot. Chad champs, I'd know, but <laughs> yeah, I don't play loser champs. And for my last question, as a former direwolf, will you bark for me? <laughs> Fuck no. I'm not a direwolf now. It's for a special occasion, man. I can't Dude, just do it right, for the content. right Our views will triple if you bark right now. I guarantee it. Hmm. Hmm. Nah, no, save it for the wrap. <laughs> Fine. Alright, that's it for today's show. Stay safe and we'll catch you next time for your weekly fix.